lovelies. <laughs> this is chapter two of Why Does He Do That? Inside the Minds of Angry and Controlling Men by Lundi. I forgot his surname. <laughs> by that guy. And the title of this chapter is The Mythology. And so let's dive into it. Here are a couple of sayings from woman. He's crazy. He feels so bad about himself. I just need to build up his self-image a little. He just loses it. He's so insecure. His mother abused him and now he has a grudge against woman and he takes it out on me. I'm so confused. I don't understand what's going on with him. In one important way, an abusive man works like a magician. <laughs> he tricks largely sorry. His tricks largely rely on getting you to look off in the wrong direction, distracting your attention so that you won't notice where the real action is. He draws you into focusing on the turbulent world of his feelings to keep your eyes turned away from the true cause of his abusiveness, which lies in how he thinks. He leads you into a convoluted maze, making your relationship with him a labyrinth of twists and turns. He wants you to puzzle over him, to try to figure him out as though he were a wonderful broken machine for which you need only to find and fix the malfunctioning parts to bring it roaring to its full potential. His desire, though he may not admit it even to himself, is that you rack your brain in this way so that you won't notice the patterns and logic of his behavior, the consciousness behind the craziness. To further divert your gaze, he may work to shape your view of his past partners, to keep you from talking to them directly, and to prepare you to disbelieve them should you happen to hear what they say. If you could follow the thread of his conduct over a series of relationships, you'd find out that his behavior isn't as erratic as it looks. In fact, it follows a fairly consistent pattern from woman to woman except for brief relationships or ones he isn't that serious about. Above all, the abusive man wants to avoid having you zero in on his abusiveness itself. So he tries to fill your head up with excuses and distortions and keep you weighed down with self-doubt and self-blame. And unfortunately, much of the society tends to follow unsuspectingly along behind him, helping him to close your eyes and his own to his problem. The mythology about abuse of men that runs through modern modern blech, modern culture has been created largely by the abusers themselves. Abusive men concoct explanations for their actions, which they give to their partners, therapists, clergy people, relatives, and social researchers. But it is a serious error to allow abusers to analyze and account for their own problems. Would we ask an active alcoholic to tell us why he or she drinks and then accept the explanation unquestion unquestioningly? <laughs> This is what we would hear. I drink because I have bad luck in life. I actually don't drink much at all. It's just a rumor that some people have been spreading about me because they don't like me. I started to drink a lot because my self-esteem was ruined by all these unfair accusations that I'm alcoholic, which I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is just so funny to me. <sighs> And I'm quite tired, so it's a little bit of delirium mixed in there. <laughs> okay, let me just get it out. Ah, oh, this is too good. Yes, that is a perfect example. Oh. When we hear these kinds of excuses from a drunk, we assume they are exactly that, excuses. 
we don't consider an active alcoholic a reliable source of insight, so why should we let an angry and controlling man be the authority on partner abuse? Our first task, therefore, is to remove the abusive man's smoke and mirrors and then set, up, set about watching carefully to see what he's really doing. A brief exercise. In my public presentations on abuse, I often begin with a simple exercise. I ask the audience, audience members to write down everything they've ever heard or ever believed about where an abuser's problem comes from. I invite you to close this book for two or three minutes now and make a similar list for yourself so that you can refer to it as we go along. Okay, you better do what he says. <laughs> I then ask people to call out items from their lists and I write them on the blackboard, organizing them into three categories. One for myths, one for partial truths, and one for accurate statements. We usually end up with 20 or 30 myths, four or five half-truths, and perhaps one or two realities. The audience members squint at me and fidget in their seats, surprised to discover that the common beliefs about the causes of abuse contain several dollops of fantasy and misconception for each ounce of truth. If you find as you go through this chapter that your own list turns out to contain mostly myths, you are not alone. For the partner of an abusive or controlling man, Having all of these mistaken theories pulled out from under you at once can be overwhelming, but for each stick that we pull out of the structure of misconception about abuse of men, a brick is waiting to take its place. When we're finished, your partner will find it much harder than before to throw you off balance and confuse you, and your relationship will make sense to you in a way that it hasn't before. Okay, so here are the myths about abusers. He was abused as a child. Yeah, that was my first thought as well. His previous partner hurt him. He abuses those he loves the most. Oh, yes. He holds in his feelings too much. Mm -hmm. He has an aggressive personality. <clears throat> he loses control. He's too angry, he is mentally ill, he hates women, he's afraid of intimacy and abandonment, he has low self-esteem, his boss mistreats him, he has poor skills in communication and conflict resolution. There are as many abusive women as abusive men. His abusiveness is as bad for him as for his partner. He is a victim of racism. He abuses alcohol or drugs. Myth number one. He was abused as a child and he needs therapy for it. Okay. The partners of my clients commonly believe that the roots of the man's abusiveness can be found in mistreatment that he suffered himself, and many professionals share the same misconception. I hear explanations along the lines of, he calls me all those horrible things because that's what his mother used to do to him. His father used to get angry at him and beat him with a belt, so now if I get angry at all, he just freaks out and starts throwing things around the house. He says it's because deep down he's really scared of my anger. His stepmother was a witch. I've met her. She's vicious. So now he really has this thing against women. Question 1. Is it because he was abused as a child? Multiple research studies have examined the question of whether men who abuse women tend to be survivors of childhood abuse, and the link has turned out to be weak. Other predictors of which men are likely to abuse women have proven far more reliable, as we will see. Notably, men who are violent toward other men are often victims of child abuse. But the connection is much less clear for men who assault women. The one exception is that those abusers who are brutally, physically violent or terrifying toward women often do have histories of having been abused as children. 
In other words, a bad childhood doesn't cause a man to become an abuser, but it can contribute to making a man who is abusive especially dangerous. If abusiveness were the product of childhood emotional injury, abusers could overcome their problem through psychotherapy. But it is virtually unheard of for an abusive man to make substantial and lasting changes in his pattern of abusiveness as a result of therapy. In chapter 14, we'll examine the differences between psychotherapy and a specialized abuser program because the latter sometimes can bring good results. He may work through other emotional difficulties, he may gain insight into himself, but his behavior continues. In fact, it typically gets worse as he uses therapy to develop new excuses for his behavior, more sophisticated arguments to prove that his partner is mentally unstable, and more creative ways to make her feel responsible for his emotional distress. Oh my goodness, that is so dangerous. <clears throat> Abusive men are sometimes masters of the hard luck story and may find that accounts of childhood abuse are one of the best ways to pull heartstrings. For some abusive men, the blame the childhood approach has an additional reason for being appealing. By focusing on what his mother did wrong, he gets to blame a woman for his mistreatment of women. This explanation can also appeal to the abused woman herself since it makes sense out of his behavior and gives her someone safe to be angry at, since getting angry at him always seems to blow up in her face. The wider society and the field of psychology in particular has often jumped on this bandwagon instead of confronting the hard questions that partner abuse raises. Abuse of women by men is so rampant that unless people can somehow make it women's own fault, they're forced to take on a number of uncomfortable questions about men and about much of male thinking. So it may seem easier to just lay the problem at the feet of the man's mother. My clients who have participated extensively in therapy or substance abuse recovery programs sometimes sound like therapists themselves, and a few actually have been, as they adopt the terms of popular psychology or textbook theory. One client used to try to lure me into intellectual debates with comments such as, well, your group follows a cognitive behavioral model, which has been shown to have limitations for addressing a problem as deep as this one. An abusive man who is adept in the language of feelings can make his partner feel crazy by turning each argument into a therapy session in which he puts her reactions under a microscope and assigns himself the role of helping her. He may, for example, explain to her the emotional issues she needs to work through or analyze her reasons for mistakenly believing that he is mistreating her. An abusive man may embellish his childhood suffering once he discovers that it helps him escape responsibility. Oh dear. The National District Attorney's Association Bulletin reported a revealing study that was conducted on another group of destructive men, child sexual abusers. The researcher asked each man whether he himself had been sexually victimized as a child. A hefty 67% of the subjects said yes. However, the researcher then informed the men that he was going to hook them up to a lie detector test and ask them the same questions again. Affirmative answers suddenly dropped to only 29%. In other words, abusers of all varieties tend to realize the mileage they can get out of saying, I'm abusive because the same thing was done to me. Ew. <sighs> Although the typical abusive man works to maintain a positive public image, it is true that some women have abusive partners who are nasty or intimidating to everyone. How about that man? Do his problems result from mistreatment by his parents? The answer is both yes and no. It depends on which problem we're talking about. His hostility toward the human race may sprout from cruelty in his upbringing, but he abuses women 
because he has an abuse problem. The two problems are related but distinct. I am not saying that you should be unsympathetic to your partner's childhood suffering. An abusive man deserves the same compassion that a non-abusive man does, neither more nor less. But a non-abusive man doesn't use his past as an excuse to mistreat you. Feeling sorry for your partner can be a trap, making you feel guilty for standing up to his abusiveness. I have sometimes said to a client, if you are so in touch with your feelings from your abusive childhood, then you should know what abuse feels like. You should be able to remember how miserable it was to be cut down to nothing, to be put in fear, to be told that the abuse is your own fault. You should be less likely to abuse a woman, not more so, from having been through it. Once I make this point, he generally stops mentioning his terrible childhood. He only wants to draw attention to it if it's an excuse to stay the same, not if it's a reason to change. Whew. <laughs> Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> okay, I've got about um, 16 minutes left. Should I carry on to myth number two? Yeah, let's do it. He had a previous partner who mistreated him terribly, and now he has a problem with women as a result. He's a wonderful man, and that beat made him get like this. As we saw with Fran in chapter one, an abuser's bitter tale of emotional destruction by a past wife or girlfriend can have a powerful impact on his current partner. In the most common version of the story, the man recounts how his ex-partner broke his heart by cheating on him, perhaps with several different men. If you ask him how he found out, he answers that everybody knew about it or that his friends told him. He also may say, I caught her cheating myself. But when you press him on what he actually saw, it often turns out that he saw nothing or that he saw her talking to some guy or riding in his car late at night, so I could tell. He may describe other wounds he received from a previous partner. She tried to control him. She wouldn't let him have any freedom. She expected him to wait on her hand and foot. She turned their children against him. She even had him arrested out of vindictiveness. What he is describing usually are his own behaviors, but he attributes them to the woman so that he is the victim. He can gain sympathy from his new partner in this fashion, especially because so many women know what it's like to be abused, unfortunately, so they can connect with his distress. The abusive or controlling man can draw a rich set of excuses from his past relationships for controlling his current partner's friendships and for accusing her of cheating on him. It's because my ex-partner hurt me so badly by cheating on me so many times and that's why I'm so jealous and can't trust you. For throwing a temper tantrum when he, she asks him to clean up after himself. My ex-partner controlled my every move and so now it makes me furious when I feel like you're telling me what to do. For having affairs of his own or keeping other love interests going on the side. I got so hurt last time that now I'm really afraid of committing, so I want to keep having involvements with other people. He can craft an excuse to fit any of his controlling behaviors. I recommend applying the following principle to assertions that an angry or controlling man makes about past women in his life. If it's an excuse for mistreating you, it's a distortion. A man was genuinely mistreated in a relationship with a woman would not be using that experience to get away with hurting someone else. Consider the reverse situation for a moment. Have you ever heard a woman claim that the reason why she's chronically mistreating her male partner is because a previous man abused her? I have never run into this excuse in the 15 years I have worked in the field of abuse. Certainly, I've encountered cases where women had trouble trusting another man after leaving an abuser, but there is a critical distinction to be made. Her past experiences may explain how she feels, but they are not an excuse for how she behaves, and the same is true for a man. When a client of mine blames a past relationship for his cruel or controlling behavior in the present, I jump in with several questions. Did your ex-partner 
Ever say that she felt controlled or intimidated by you? What was her side of the story? Did you ever put your hands on her in anger or did she ever get a restraining order? By the time he's finished providing his answers, I usually can tell what happened. He abused that woman too. It's fine to commiserate with a man about his bad experience with a previous partner, but the instant he uses her as an excuse to mistreat you, stop believing anything he tells you about that relationship and instead recognize it as a sign that he has problems with relating to women. Track down his ex-partner and talk with her as soon as possible, even if you hate her. An abuser can mistreat partner after partner in relationships, each time believing that the problems are all the woman's fault and that he is the real victim. But whether he presents himself as the victim of an ex-partner or of his parents, the abuser's aim, though perhaps unconscious, is to play on your compassion so that he can avoid dealing with his problem. <sighs> Amen.